Good morning. I will be talking about scaling PU parts Debian org to multiple architectures. Um, skip this. Uh, one thing, I walk barefoot. Some people think I like to break rules, which is not really true. I um, think for Debian policy that should be strictly followed by, um, by packages and we should not bend the rules. If any package is a special snowflake, it's probably buggy and needs to be fixed. We have 20,000 source packages and there's 30 or 40 or 50 special ones, but the rest is not. So if your package is special, I would like to know why. With human societies, they also need rules, but these rules need to be more flexible. We are not software. We must bend these rules and special snowflakes are great but this is for humans, packages are different. And for all rules, there are exceptions. And testing for policy compliance is hard. So, yeah, I started to, with the Stabian, PU part Stabian Org service in 2009, actually took over maintain as well last stopped doing it, who originally developed it in 2007. Um, there's now almost 700,000 logs from 54,000 packages in 28 suits that were tested in, at the end of 2016 and now we are by, at 47 suits. In the last five years alone we did almost 10 million tests. And today I'm basically not active in developing PU parts anymore. I just maintain the service and maintain the source code. I do sometimes update it for new stuff but the development is done mostly by Andreas Beckmann. Um, I'll skip this as well because there are not so many people in the audience. Have you received a PU parts bug report? Yay! Yeah. Have you received more than one bug in a source, single source package? <laughs> Yay! Good the video team is here. Um, we have at least one that PU part contributor here. The talk is mostly done that there's more people contributing. Um, PU part, so what is it? It's a package installation and upgrade removal test suite. It tests whether packages comply with Debian policy, um, or rather it tests a subset of policy, mainly that whether a package can be installed, upgraded, removed, and purged, and that the system is the same afterwards. It only uses upget, it doesn't use aptitude, so we could repeat all these tests with also using aptitude. Um, and it only uses ch roots and not real system, not other things, so it's a test a subset. And all bugs are filed manually. Um, we, have, we have some um, templates, but there's no tool which will scan the log and say this is likely this kind of bug which could be improved and it's another thing. And the source code is written in Python, it's in, on git Debian org, and it's actually a rather small and nice code base for the most part. And the yeah, bugs and patches are very much welcome. Uh, new contributors would really be awesome. Um, yeah. So PU parts runs PU parts Debian org runs PU parts on all packages in these suits, which are many, so just it's 47 suits and suit combinations. So we need, there's also from Jesse to Stretch, or from Jesse to Stretch to Buster, and so on. To backports. And, and to backports. And to backports, and to proposed updates, and to whatever. And sadly, this is only on AMD64 and has been only MD64 for the last 10 years. And to test multiple architectures, what the real fix would be at support for multiple architectures in PU Parts Master, and that has been on the table since 10 years and nobody got around to do it. And I don't think it would be that hard, but it would be some work. And then a few months ago, I realized I could could just run two masters and be done. Um, with 
the different directories where they live and then they talk to different slaves and the slaves need to be real i386 or armhf or whatever but just running two masters would be fine and so i hope that some dsa debian admin people would be here to talk about resources um it needs still then if you have two masters then we would have you parts the web page twice and there would be no navigation between them um, but I think that would still be worthwhile at the start and as soon as we have these two more architectures then somebody will hopefully write the code to make cross um, architecture things. Right, having it better is better than having it not and then there's more incentive to fix it if yeah, and I think it would be good to test ARM64 or ARM HF now, nowadays. I386 is not so useful probably, but it's easy hardware to get. Of course, you can just run it on AMD64. Um, yeah. There's more stuff to be done. PewPath's re report at the moment takes 12 hours to run, and we run it twice a day. So that's something that only runs once a day. And with two architectures, it would run the double amount of time. And there it, that's, Andreas is working on it split in splitting PU parts reports in several bits, which can be run at the same time. But I think PU parts reports also creates the report for all the old suits, which are old, 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 old stable and old, 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 old stable. And that's a bit useless, so there's definitely room for improvement could also just put the results in a database and create the pages dynamically because at the moment we're creating 700,000 pages. This report is only for the web pages or yeah. also to the interaction with Brittany? No, no, it's just for the web pages. Brittany is used tool in the testing, in the Debian release team area. Um, and it, it, it parses the logs, but the logs are created by PUPART's report and the logs are need only need to be passed once, and then we, then there's the result, there's several classes detected of errors, and we, if we would put that in a database, then we can also process it as well. And the other thing missing, which is not in PU parts report, is proper isolation of PU parts itself. The moment we only test it in a CH root and on the same so with TCP IP you can communicate to the host that sometimes kills processes on the host. So if we would use um, kernel namespaces there or KVM or whatever technology for proper isolation, then DSA would be happy because at the moment the backup job is uh, regularly killed and some other thing is killed from DSA. And then they get a Nagios notification and are annoyed. And there's 17 bugs open against source PU parts. I've tried to close all wishlist bugs which were older than two or three years and nobody worked on. I put them in the to-do at the bottom at close wishlist bugs or something. These are all more or less real errors, problems. Um, yeah. yeah, please help or it will not happen. Or Andreas will make it happen, but maybe Andreas at some point doesn't has no time in night. And this was it. Comments, feedback, anything. Um, I missed the beginning, of course, but can you comment maybe a little bit on the uh, um, the use of the of the release team now of the results of PO part? I mean, it, I guess, or at least I had the feeling that in the beginning it wasn't going smoothly for some transient things, but I haven't noticed any issues with that lately. So, in the beginning, there were a few more bugs by people or generally that people were then when their package didn't migrate because of PU parts. But I think that has it's not happening that much anymore at all. Um, the release team uses that for the testing migration and also 
for proposed updates, they check if the package is um, installed sanely. That's it at the moment. There's also there's what um, we are doing is we're testing upgrades from stable to testing to sit, and that could block the migration of packages to testing. Um, or it will show that packages will fail to upgrade later. How are you reporting the failures? How we are reporting them? Yeah. By filing bugs. Sorry? By filing bugs. I mean to, to block the... Uh, the, how, the question is how we are reporting the failures. Um, I think there's the script from the release team which um, parses our output and then puts the block into Brittany, but I don't really know. It's Brit Brittany itself that passes the, or, yeah. So it's a two-step, it fetches the file and then it processes it to s figure out if it's blocking or not. And I think it's only blocking on regression, not on. Yeah, it's only on regressions. But only, uh, only to SID? I mean, there's the no need for it to, to block on the transitions, right? You can just limit the sections that it's, that it's working on. It's only testing, testing at the moment, so Buster in this case. Okay. But then I, I guess you could test also on stable to testing, or? Yeah, but they, they, they look at it for proposed update, but this is rather manual. Okay. Oh, so it's great that it's being used actually in that way. Yet. Yeah. Do you have uh, any idea what, uh, or have a feeling of the status of, of what you would do on another architecture, maybe even from the reproducible build point I, of view? I would like to have DSA hardware for that, because um, it should be running constantly and Debian has, has resources. Um, so I would not, the reproducible build stuff is all done on private hardware or on Bonded for I this. didn't need uh, meant to abuse that for that, but just if you ever run it or have a feeling for how other architectures are faring on this area. I think they will be mostly the same because it's source-based and the problems are usually source-based. Um, there will be some installation failures found, I guess, through due to broken builds or stuff or also missing dependency combinations, maybe. And, and multi-arch kind of? <laughs> you mean multi-arch as in, we don't test that yet, <laughs> and. It's gonna make it a lot more, bigger problem, I guess. <laughs> yes. But the, the co-installability, co you can test also with the dozer tools. And so they, these classes should be fine as well. Yeah, that's, I'm done. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for using PU parts.